as you guys already know, uh, Trump, or let me let me revise that, Biden, as I indicated to you guys yesterday, Biden has announced that he's running for re-election now. Biden is already, I believe, the oldest president in history. Think about that for a minute. At 82, I believe he's 82 years old. Um, there's a running joke because he's always falling up and down the steps. He's probably the president that's falling the most out of any other president or tripping up and down the steps. Uh, he often at times misses doors. We don't even know if he's in his right mind. We don't know if, if his memory is fading. Uh, all, of his, all of his functions and his cognitive functions of his hands and eye coordination seem to be off on a regular basis. But President Biden, uh, our president, you and I, because you voted for him, uh, our president has announced that he's running for re-election and he released footage that highlighted that yesterday. Well, the former president, you know, the one that came in before Biden and you guys voted for Biden and Kamala Harris because they told you if you didn't vote black, then you wasn't black. Or if you didn't vote for them, then you wasn't black. Uh, has released video footage that basically addresses what he thinks about Biden running for re-election. Let's go ahead and play what he thinks. You could take the five worst presidents in American history and put them together, and they would not have done the damage Joe Biden has done to our nation in just a few short years. Not <laughs> yo, yo, you got to love Trump, man. Listen, even if you don't like him as a person, you have to like him as an entertainer. You have to like the idea that he's willing to say what he really means and mean what he say. And that he doesn't mince words and he gets re get right to it. He said from the very beginning, he didn't say hello. He didn't say what up, though, like we say in Detroit. He said, listen, man, you could take the worst five presidents in the history of the United States of America. And all of them combined wouldn't even equate to the amount of damage Joe Biden has done uh, since he's been in office. <laughs> Talk about throwing bombs. Not even close. Thanks to Joe Biden's socialist spending calamity, American families are being decimated by the worst inflation in half a century. Agreed. Me and Trump are on the same same page on that. Inflation is out of control, and most people are trying to figure out how they're going to survive, let alone thrive. So that's absolutely true. Banks are failing. Our currency is crashing. And the dollar will soon no longer be the world standard, which will be our greatest defeat in over 200 years. Now, uh, this is what I like to call, if we just being 100% objective, this is what I like to call a white lie. Now, why am I calling this a white lie? Because he said banks are failing. Well, we know that that's at the forefront, or at least a few weeks ago that that was at the forefront um, of a lot of what was being communicated uh, across social media as far as uh, banks over in Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley Bank failing and stuff like that. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, and this is why you guys need to do a little bit more of your research, because we know that certain candidates and all candidates, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm going to read your super chat shortly. All candidates, they, they heap on whatever it is that's as a headline in order to illustrate a point. But the context is that banks always fail. Banks collapse on a regular basis. As a matter of fact, uh, multiple different banks, a lot of banks, a lot of smaller banks, maybe not the bigger ones, but a lot of smaller banks um, fall on a regular basis every single year, even during the Trump presidency, even during the Obama presidency, even during Biden presidency, even during the Bush presidency, even on the Clinton presidency, banks, banks fail on a regular basis. OK, so we know that that is true, but it is a white lie and that uh, it doesn't give you the full context and that banks fail on a regular basis. So uh, but inflation is out of control and the U.S. dollar is under attack. We all know that real wages have been falling 24 months in a row. In other words, under Biden, workers have gotten a pay cut each and every month for two straight years. 
Now, what is he saying with regard to that, right? He's saying that workers have gotten a pay cut each and every month over the last two years. Now, on the surface, now, this is what I call a white truth, right? It's the reverse of a white lie. He's not giving you an additional context, but he's absolutely right. And the reason that he's right is even though you may have gotten a raise on your job, let's just say hypothetically, on average, people get a between a one and a three percent raise. Sometimes on good years, you'll get a five to six percent raise on your job. At this time, while we're in a mild recession, what you see happening is that people are just happy to have a job. There are jobs available, but there are not a whole lot of jobs in which people qualify for the high paying jobs. And even if you make $100,000 a year, it doesn't go as far as it used to. Why? Because inflation is out of control. So even if you get a one to two to three percent raise or you make it more than you ever have in your entire life, uh, it doesn't seem to be stretching as far simply because inflation is out of control, meaning your rent went up a whole lot. The cost of gas went up a whole lot. The cost of food and chicken wings or whatever it is that you buy from the grocery store went up a whole lot. Travel went up a whole lot. You being able to take a check out in order to bust her down went up a whole lot. Clothes, a whole lot. The cost to be able to raise kids, a lot. Homeowners association fees, through the roof. So everything is exponentially more, more uh, cost more. And even though you may be making more money than you ever have, it just doesn't stretch as far. And you're going to feel like you're broker than you ever been simply because the true cost in your inflation is actually much higher than uh, what it is that they identify as inflation because you don't understand how money works. So he's absolutely right. People are making less money than they ever have before based off of the true cost of what it takes in order to survive. So he's right. So for every white lie he tells, he tells a white truth. Um, and that's the context behind it. We have surrendered our energy independence, just like we surrendered in Afghanistan, which we had just a short time ago. And the price of gasoline just hit a five-month high, and it's going much higher than that. Under my leadership, we had the most secure border in U.S. history by far. Never had a border like this. Under Biden, the southern border has been abolished and millions of illegal aliens have been released into our communities. What's happening now is beyond. You know, there was this, um, I don't know if y'all remember, but just like over the last two years, uh, DeSantis and Texas, people from these Republican states in which they're having a border crisis, um, and something that Kamala Harris and more importantly, Joe Biden was supposed to be addressing uh, has gotten so far out of control that they started busing those same immigrants or people that were illegally coming into the country in which uh, our current administration was advocating for this. They start dropping them off in front of their house. They start busing them over into these Democratic cities, into these Democratic hellholes, right? Um, and it's so funny because even the immigrants specifically was acting like they deserve some rights walking into the country illegally. It was the wildest thing that I had ever seen in my life. Ironically enough, though, um, he is right. I believe that Trump did take on a war uh, with China. Um, he understood exactly where the economy was going. Uh, he instituted tariffs on China uh, in order to stop the issues and stop the uh, I like to call it unfair competition in that even over in China, when manufacturers for years, for decades would go over there or people would go over there or Apple was having a problem getting a foothold in China, Tesla was one of the first companies that was able to operate the way that he operates in China. But if you were a manufacturer that established uh, a business over in China, you had to do 50% business and partner with a Chinese owned company in order to establish a foothold there. Meanwhile, over here in the United States of America, it was literally a free for all. Anybody could do anything that they wanted to do. Uh, Trump did. He does not get enough credit, but he did renegotiate what was going on with NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement. Uh, he renegotiated with Canada. He renegotiated with Mexico. And so those were things that he put in place that once Biden even became president, uh, he did not even remove the tariffs because he understood, in my opinion, that Trump was right about the war. Uh, that was going on internationally when it comes to currency manipulation, manufacturing, different businesses, the semiconductor chip shortage. And there was a lot of things happening with regard to 
uh, it not just being a physical war as far as troops going over to China or China coming over here. Uh, it was a war about how it is that we can manipulate the currency and how it is that we can establish business and basically become a stronger world power in which we can influence and sway other countries to then become on our side or in China's case to become on their side, right? And so ironically enough, Trump got a lot of flack of what was going on with immigration. Interestingly though, Obama was, was way more fierce and relentless and deported more people than Trump ever had. Obama was, to his credit, but I think it's just unfairly painted towards Trump, to his credit, Obama was really, really tough on uh, illegal immigrants being in the country. Obama was getting these camps popping and he was getting these people deported. And a lot of people don't realize it, but Trump got way more flack than Obama did. Um, and now Biden just basically opened up the border for everybody to come in and do whatever they wanted to do anyway. But let's continue. And belief. They're coming in from mental institutions and prisons. They're all being emptied. They're being dumped into the United States of yep. America. Many of these people are very dangerous. They're being dumped. We're like a dumping ground. Our cities have been overrun with homelessness, drug addicts, and violent criminals who are being released from jail in mass with no retribution whatsoever, while law enforcement is weaponized against law-abiding conservatives or Republicans or people they just don't like. Our children are being indoctrinated and mutilated by left-wing freaks and zealots. <laughs> the senior ranks of our military have gone completely woke, and our military is suffering greatly. I don't see one lie being told. I don't see one lie being told. Our schools are starting to turn into indoctrination camps. Our college campuses, aside from them being uh, many versions of the Freak Nick from 94, uh, has also turned into a, a liberal woke camp. And multiple different companies are starting to sponsor and advocate for some of the most egregious things when it comes to our kids and our children. Biden has totally humiliated our nation on the world stage, starting with the Afghanistan disaster. Perhaps the most embarrassing event in the history of our country. It meant so much to our enemies when they watched that horrible retreat. Russia is teaming up with China. Iran is days away from a nuclear bomb, not even thinkable. Ukraine has been devastated by an invasion that would never, ever have happened. If I was president, what do y'all think about? Like, do we know that for sure? He can stand on that, though. He can stand on that because there were no new wars that were created under the Trump administration. There were no new wars that were created under the Trump administration by all by optics. Right. Just by looking at it on the outside in. Uh, you'd have to think that Vladimir Putin and China and other countries uh, respected Trump more than they respect our current administration. Just from looking at it from an optics perspective, because we don't know what we don't know, right? Just from looking at it from an optics, optics perspective, you'd have to say that they had to respect him more than they respect our current administration. And Joe Biden has led us to the very brink of World War III. They say Trump was right about everything. Well, I'm not predicting World War III, but I will say this. We're very close, and they're only talking about nuclear weapons. On top of it all, Biden is the most corrupt president in American history, and that's not even close. Nobody can believe what's going on with, again, no retribution whatsoever. With such a calamitous and failed presidency, it is almost inconceivable that Biden would even think of running for re-election. So, I don't know about the most corrupt president in history. Like, I don't know about that. That's probably a little bit of a stretch. We know about Hunter Biden's laptop. Um, it's a lot of different things going on. But uh, what do you think about Trump's perspective or Trump's response to 
uh, Biden being or real or announcing his reelection campaign. And and this is the thing that I really want to know. Do you think that Biden, because we all know that it is virtually impossible to have uh, somebody come up and replace him on a Democratic side because it's all based off of um, gaining support from your constituents. There's nobody that's going to come against Biden in a re-election campaign uh, because you have the strongest chance of being re-elected or having the Democrats control the White House when you go for re-election, right? So nobody is going to challenge him on the Democratic side that's worthy of, of being an opponent, right? But what do you think about his chances of being re-elected? For me, I used to think it was impossible to even think that Biden would be re-elected based off of what it was uh, that I was seeing prior to happening uh, for the last campaign. But now I put nothing past them. I put nothing past uh, the possibility of Biden being reelected because I know who my people are. I know who people that live on that Democrat plantation. I know that y'all don't care nothing about policy or anything like that. And I know y'all going to vote on the possibility of getting your student loans forgiven. Uh, and so it's easy for them to bamboozle you and convince you to do something that's not in your own best interest. So I don't put it past anybody. I, I think that it is a great possibility that he gets reelected, regardless of how, how old he is, how, how bad of a job he's doing, the whole nine yards, right?